everyone so today I'm going to review another watercolor book and this was the last one that I purchased and I think I've purchased about four or five watercolor books um, in the last month or so and I think I will slow down for now just because I have plenty to work from so this is the learn to paint in watercolor with 50 small paintings Pick up the skills, put on the paint, hang up your art. And it's by Will Freeborn. So the concept of this book is that you create a small sized painting that is worthy to be framed and to go on your wall. Now, um, it is unclear to begin with how small these paintings are because you know that there are some miniature paintings that literally paint something that's the size of a coin so it's unclear but as soon as you start flipping through the book you realize that he quite often um, not all the time but quite often he uses the 14 by 10 inch paper um, and there is then slightly bigger sized as well, but most cases it's the same um, watercolor block he's using. So um, that is the size of these pieces to give you an idea. Now I have uh, already done two paintings from his book. Unfortunately I haven't filmed it because I did them late at night so the lighting was poor and um, yeah, but I will show you as we go. So let's start with the layout of this book. So we get a lovely um, display of his art supplies. Okay so here is the chapter breakdown and let's have a quick look. So chapter one is getting started. He'll be talking about basic kit, choosing your colors, color mixing, paper, washers, color, light and atmosphere, how to keep a sketchbook, hints and tips. So you, you have all the basics basically and what I really like is that you get a nice um, look inside his sketchbook as well apart from these pieces. So then chapter two we've got simple um, still lives, you've got lively washers, backgrounds for still lives, working with a minimal palette, um, arranging a simple still life, basic drawing for watercolor, get confident with color, classic subjects, new approach, etc, etc. If you want, you can pause here and have a good read. Um, but there is, you know, a, a huge number of different subjects that he covers, from more kind of modern donut illustration to classic landscapes, you get pretty much everything covered in this book and that's what I really liked about um, Will Freeborn's style. So here is then some architecture as well um, and animals and finally figures. So that's very interesting. Um, I really like the artist, I love his style and um, so here's a little introduction again you can pause here and have a read if you fancy. Let's have a look. So here's chapter one. Let's have a look at the layout of this chapter and then well, I'm going to show you a few um, paintings that I have um, selected here to share with you because they are uh, some of my favorites. So here he is talking about um, his basic art supplies kit and let's jump into number six and it says watercolor paints. Unfortunately I cannot see. Okay so Mason has joined us so um, anyway I just had a look here under number six and it doesn't give us what brands it is. I, I, I always think it's such a shame when artists don't do that because I really would love to know uh, what kind of watercolors there are. Then we also have the travel kit which is the same palette here and the same thing it's a watercolor set and no more information than that. Um, I can spot a Windsor and Newton white gouache but that doesn't mean that the watercolors would be Windsor and Newton as well so let's continue ah, I can also see Stillman and Byrne beta series uh, one of those uh, small sketchbooks here in the travel um, kit so I'll just bring it up for you so you can see his travel kit quite well 
Um, oh, and I can see number 12 is my beloved... Um, what's that? It says 12. Travel brush with built-in water reservoir optional. No, that's 11. Pencil brush pen. That's strange. Why? Um, pencil... Well, this is basically my pen, but for some reason it seems to be messed up here. So this is, it looks like the um, carbon, platinum carbon ink fountain pen. Um, but for some reason it's uh, listed as something completely different here. So anyway, and then here, here he has the color mixing. So he separates all the colors into different groups So for mixing blues. Um, it says, for a strong, vivid, bold blue, use French ultramarine blue. For a purple blue mix, cerulean blue with alizarin crimson. So, a bunch of information, um, but let's really... And there is paper as well, so this is the hot pressed versus cold pressed. Gives you an indication of how the watercolour behaves. But uh, let's look more into his um, illustrations in a bit. So here he's um, sharing the color palette, which colors he's used for the same illustration and how different it would look. That's a great way of learning as well. How to keep a sketchbook. So he shares a few things here. I love this spread, the double page spread. It's um, a little insight of his sketchbooks and it just looks so inspiring and super creative. Um, I love the double page spread here as well of the coffee shop scene. So bunch and bunch of interesting things. Then hints and tips. And then finally we're going to chapter two, simple still lives. And from here I want to show you the first illustration which is the Donut Delight and it's called Lively Washers. So um, over here, he tells you um, the materials that he used. So the watercolor block, as I said to you before, 14 by 10 inches, the 2B pencil, size eight and six run brushes and masking fluid. The color palette over here, he then tells you it's buff titanium or mix yellow ochre with a touch of white so he's giving you a little tip here if you don't have buff titanium uh, burnt umber burnt sienna cadmium lemon yellow cadmium orange cerulean blue and quinacridone and magenta so that's all very useful and then um, gives you a nice bit of information under every step of the illustration and um, that's quite good because sometimes artists do very limited writing and it might not be enough to understand but he seems that he's really trying to teach you of how to achieve and how to learn um, this sort of style uh, in watercolor so let's jump to the next one so this one i quite like it's the flowers with a difference classic subject new approaches i quite like that it's quite edgy because um poppies are poppies but then he decided to um, also have a hand present in the painting which seems to be like a tattoo hand um, and at first it, it's actually quite interesting because at first you think maybe it's supposed to be the shadows of the poppies but then when you have a closer look it doesn't look like poppies so it must be a tattoo of some sort which, like I said, it's a nice, edgy uh, little addition there. Then he has something a little bit more subtle and delicate. So these are the wildflowers, compose as you go. So he teaches you how to kind of add. So he starts with one and then adds another and so on. I like the shadows he's working here on. And then we go to the next one, which I really, really like. This is the peony on black background, creating dramatic contrast. So that's very interesting. Um, I have seen this type of paintings before and they are quite striking. So I do like his wide range of um, styles. And let's go to the next one. So now we go to the landscape chapter and this is the meadow 
reserving colors so here he's teaching you the masking tape technique and step by step you can see how he's layering colors to achieve in the end this sort of layers of colors underneath and building it up with glazes so that's very nice this one i like a lot because it's quite small you can see it compared to his finger size um so this is a figure um painting figures in snow telling stories so there is a little dog and um i think a couple of people walking with an umbrella and there is some snow suggested with the masking fluid again and it's quite simple and basic but i like something like that and let's look at the next one then we have something a little bit more complicated which is the cityscapes and it's the period buildings symmetry and proportions is what he's going to cover here and that is something i would struggle with because i cannot draw a straight line um so yeah that's very very um as you can see intricate with the details but it's very um beautiful looking it's like a piece out of um, a postcard or something so that's very nice if you into that type of thing as well or just want to learn about it and then we have the chapter on animals and this particular one is covering bunnies and it's grouping subjects so he's putting a couple of bunnies there and presenting them in a nice kind of shape together in a balanced way so i really like this because um i like the brush strokes here and the color the color palette here as well so then no is this one here next one is the dog um lily the whippet i, I believe it's his dog that he painted and she is a beautiful dog and when I looked at it immediately I wanted to have a go and I have followed his uh, suggestion for the colors it's the yellow ochre burnt amber paints gray elizabeth crimson and rose sienna I used my St. Petersburg White Nights palette for that and I will show you what my Lily looks like and I do apologize if Will is watching this <laughs> for any reason um, so there is my version not as uh, not as beautiful as his of course um but i was just trying to learn of how he was placing these colors and it's a color palette that i naturally wouldn't gravitate towards but i quite enjoyed it i like the cleanness and the white around lily and the whippet so yeah that was quite uh quite interesting experience uh, experience and what i also learned is to do her whiskers just here by um layering color the darker part of the color with leaving some of the white so i didn't use any um masking tape but just painted around it which is what he is suggesting to do so that's my lily let's look uh on to the next one so here is the flamingos painting live animals so um this one is quite funny um, i think he captured a real moment here but um so i quite like this idea as well because it's very loose and sort of very sketchy and i had a go and i basically already put it into a frame so i don't want to take it out it's in my bedroom this frame was a very long time empty and i feel that the color scheme here works really well with it so i quite like it and then the splatters here use the heidi swap um uh, little bottles that you spray on and i just kind of added some of that um additional thing onto it and yeah, I'm really happy having produced two little uh, illustrations that are very simple. So let's have a look at the final chapter. And the final chapter is people, which is something I'm really interested in and I want to learn more about. So I quite like this chapter. So um, here he's talking about figures and small figures and how you paint um, people when when they're far and you don't really need to paint them out you don't need to paint faces you just need to suggest that they're either laying or sitting there's a group of um, people or um, just very basic then we get um, 
to to this um, part here which is waiting in line simplifying people so he is uh, drawing more detail here so you can see the face you can see the color uh, of the hair and the shape of um, their bodies and what they're wearing but it's still uh, not too detailed so that's a nice range then we have something a little bit more art artsy which is a coffee shop painting quickly in in situ right. so here obviously he's using um oh yeah so he says here platinum carbon pen fountain pen with waterproof ink or black fine liner so that's the same uh, pen that I love to use so I'm happy to hear that he uses it I will leave a link below because um, so many people have bought this pay, uh, pen this fountain pen um, after my reviews of it and seeing all, all of my illustrations with it so um, you can um, have a look if you want it's a great pan, my favorite fountain pan for a detailed uh, illustration. So the next one is Shades of Grey Portrait. Um, so here he's using a very minimal color palette and creating um, kind of depth uh, in the skin and around the eyes uh, to give it more of a realistic effect. So I really like that as well. Very nice. And then dance practice capturing movements so there are some loose figures and um, etc so it's quite actually challenging to draw someone in the movement to suggest that movement rather than a static feel so here are some ballerinas and here he's using um, it seems like some sort of charcoal sticks um, for this piece and that is it stretching paper he's teaching you to do that in the end Next. and then finally here he says that the um a lobster lobster gets credit and that he was not harmed during this uh, painting session so that is the book i absolutely love it and it's a great great a book to um, again to learn from so thanks for watching the links will be below as always and see you soon